Don't you love my new toy? <laughs> it's fun for Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. Wanted to stop in and let you know we are gonna give you a gift. As you know, you're already getting bonus Fridays through the end of the month. And now we are also gonna add in a Monday video. That's right, we will add in a fourth video. Hopefully you're not gonna get tired of us. So we will be coming to you on Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and bonus Friday, the month of December only. Happy holidays. Don't get tired of us. And make sure you have that notification bell on. Hey. Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. Just, just two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Hey, how are y'all doing? Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show, guys. Glad to have you here. Um, we wanted to get back in um, to some military love. But before we do, I want to give a shout out to Natasha for doing her live the other day. Hopefully oh, you all joined you. in. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Appreciate and congratulations. That. Thanks, babe. Okay. So what are we doing today? We're getting back into some military stuff, right? We are. Um, we're dressed for the occasion. We are. We have our green on. <laughs> Debbie's got camo <laughs> pants on. And, and Too bad you can't see them. I got, I got some cool really pants. Like there. You can see them. You can stand up. <laughs> yeah. These are not camo. Why did I stand up? Show your pants. <laughs> you <laughs> Get a ladder. I need a ladder. I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Right. Anyway. So we are fatigued out. We said pants. Y'all are like, yeah, I, forgot what that, I forgot what that means over there. That means underwear. Our trousers. We have clothes on. We've showed you our trousers. Typically, I don't wear any when we're doing our videos. True or false? In the comments, let us know. No, anyway, in all seriousness, um, November is over. November seems to be, you know, the bigger month for military love. Mm -hmm. You know what? Not on our channel. No, that's, right. that's not how we do things because you know we love the military. Absolutely, we do. So today we are going to check out Defending Britain, Who Keeps the Country Safe? And that is what we want to find out. Mm -hmm. um, we want to see the units that aren't normally talked about, that um, the everyday to day things that, uh, everyday to day things, day to day <laughs> things, um, you know, that are, are necessary for the survival of the country. These mm -hmm. are our allies. These are, these are our cousins, you know. And remember, guys, we're all about unity here. When we think of American military, we also think of the British military and the Commonwealth. So as always, we want to say a thank you to all active military and veterans here and abroad. Thank you for your service. Now, let's dive in and find out Defending Britain, who keeps the country safe. I'm very excited about this. Let's do this. Every second of every day, they protect yeah. us. They are the nearly 200,000 men and women of the UK's armed forces. Ooh. By land, sea and air, they keep our islands safe. We go behind the scenes to shed new light on their world and reveal a few surprises along the way. Okay. I'm excited already. I'm intrigued. I can't I'm wait to see more. already. If you guys are, hit the like button. Forgot to bother you about that crap earlier, <laughs> so... <laughs> hey, don't forget to subscribe if you if want, you want to. to. The fitting the niche, this is going to be cool. In the English Channel, HMS 7 is fighting a war of economics. The Royal Navy polices the fishing industry out here, a job it's had for 400 oh, really? years. Whoa! The rules are there for a reason, that is to protect the economy of the UK fishing industry, and so we have to enforce it if required. If people were allowed to go free reign on our fish stocks and in our waters, they would have no livelihood left. Okay. The Britain has a fishing trawler in its sights. Huh. On board, everything is checked. Nets and fishing gear are first. The holes have to be large enough to let young fish escape. I reckon this will be all right. 9-7, all needs to be above 80. The next stage of the inspection is a check of what's down below in the fish room. and um, We'll be able to estimate the weight of each species. So we'll do that for a couple of species, just make sure it ties in with what's in the log on board that we've already checked. Huh. Um, and then we'll just have a general look around. Yeah. 
fish caught at sea are packed in ice to keep them fresh. Whatever the weather on deck, it's always freezing down here. I can imagine these fish across, so make sure there's no ice or anything else mixed in that will affect the weight, and then we'll just put it straight on the scales. Punishments can be severe. Fines of thousands of pounds, seizure of fish or equipment, or criminal prosecution. It's a necessity. I think you've got to be police. If you break laws and you start landing fish, that's not supposed to be landed, you're not doing yourself any favours because it drops the price on the market. With everything above board, the Navy move on. Okay. I've already learned something there, you? Yeah, I, I had no idea that, that that was part of what they um, patrolled or took care of. Yeah, and see, that's what, um, this video just popped up in a watch later thing for me. Not watch later, in a, in a recommendation. So, yeah. but this is what's so cool about this, why I wanted to see this, because um, I was told by somebody else I sent it to that it's just showing a lot of the stuff that people don't know about mm -hmm. day to day or are, you know, th these are people that work so hard and they don't get that, you know, same type of recognition, recognition yeah. as the other people, the other forces and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and it makes sense, you know, having to patrol the, the fishing industry to make sure that the economy doesn't break down because fishing Freaking, is a huge part. It's freaking genius. Also, just because it, I don't know if it'll come up later, but I did remember this is a five-year-old video, I think. So. On Salisbury Plain, the Royal Tank Regiment is on the move. Wow. The There's a Royal Tank Regiment? Thank you. That is so British <laughs> and I freaking love it. Do we have a tank regiment? I don't know, but I it's not know. royal. <laughs> that's, no, that's freaking awesome. That's respect. The world of remote piloted drones and laser guided bombs. Nice. You might think the tank has had its day. No. I don't believe it. Ooh. There is a lot going on in the world at the moment. There are a lot of threats to the United Kingdom, as well as other democracies throughout the world. And in that case, it's entirely possible that the British Army and therefore the Royal Tank Regiment may be called forward. We are part of the reactive force. Our job is to ultimately deploy and fight overseas. Rock and roll. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> they train so they are quite literally ready for action. These tanks are permanently on standby. If a war breaks out in Europe, they could be on the front line in a matter of days. Awesome. Awesome. The centerpiece is the Challenger II main battle tank. At 62 tons and a top speed of nearly 40 miles an hour, nice. it can go wow. where it likes, especially armed as it is with a 120 Ooh. millimeter gun on the front. Love it. Thanks for your second. Well, well, before, really quickly, I know in the comments of some videos, some people said, and I don't know if they were taking the piss, mm -hmm. that there is a tank, I think it was a tank, or was it a, maybe it was um, a, a ship where it's full, I think it was a tank fully equipped with like a tea making station. I'm like, shut <laughs> up. Did you remember seeing that comment? Vaguely. A couple times, I'm like, yeah. you guys are messing with me. <laughs> but tell me if that was true because that's hilariously awesome and just, it's just cool. Thank but you. this is so amazing. As it is with a 120 yeah. millimeter gun. I never that part. Tanks are essential if we are to provide a potent uh, defense and a, a capability to combat threats overseas. Mm -hmm. We're moving roughly from a counterinsurgency focus into being focused again on fighting conventional warfare. And in that case, in all of the major sort of combat zones in, in the world, so Syria or Iraq or Ukraine, tanks are being used, tanks are fighting tanks. Yeah. Sometimes only a tank will do. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, well. <laughs> Don't point that at me. That got me. The world One of the oldest jobs the army does takes place every day right in the heart of London. The Coldstream Guards have been protecting the royal palaces since Charles II was king back in 1660. Yeah. Anyone who turns around and says that they don't have, you know, a sort of a, a feeling of pride as they march through the gates of Buckingham Palace, I think, is probably lying to you. And, you know, your, your tunic, your bear skin, representing the Coldstream Guards and years and years of tradition, you know, it makes you feel good. This highly polished parade is a long time in the making. Everything has to be just right. There are no shortcuts when you're getting ready to guard the Queen. You've got to do yeah, your belt, you know, you've got the, the white belt, you've got the brass on the belt, you've got more brass, brass, 
grass, brass, and then wait the bell as well. That's probably about half an hour or so. And what about the bear skin? What is that? What's required there? Um, just this hair, really. We just give it a wash every now and again. Leave it to dry upside down. You then comb it upwards and comb it back down just to get it nice and fluffed up. And then again, you wouldn't, you know, wash it once a month. Hmm. Wow. I just want to say one thing. Um, you know, watching them do that. You know, of course they're going out there. They got to look. Perfect, right? Mm -hmm. That reminds you, what does that remind you of? Do you know where I'm going with this? No. It reminds me of the Sentinels. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Sentinels here, if you don't know, um, part of the old guard regiment who guard mm -hmm. the tomb of our unknown soldiers. And it's very much, they're, we liken our Sentinels to the Royal Guard in a lot of ways. Right. Uh, but yeah, they have to take severe care of their uniforms or can't be anything out of yes, place. Absolutely and perfect. My dad was in the Marines. He talked to me about shining his shoes and how serious that was. Yeah. It seems and, to be an important part of all of the military, but especially when you're yes. out there at um yeah. the palace protecting the yeah, king absolutely. or queen. Well now king, yeah. Yes. So it's gonna be hard to get used to that, I know. To be honest, when it comes on to the boots, you have to put time into your boots. So is there some rivalry in the boots? Uh yeah, lads, yeah, between lads yeah, and my dad trying. said that to me. Have better boots. Oh yeah, my boots are more gleaming. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> the guards. Yeah. yeah so for example, you got a scratch in your boots there. That's when you've got to go back to the start again, get them sort of redone. You know, you're talking a good few hours work to get them sorted again. Um, so obviously for for every guy, it's his pride and joy is his boots. <laughs> it, I always thought my dad was kind of full of crap on that, but apparently yeah. that's been an ongoing thing for yeah, the dawn time. of time, I guess. As far Shine as those boots, the, yeah, because he used to talk about that a lot and. Just hearing that makes me feel kind of kind of connected to dad again. Don't, don't go near them. Don't touch another guy's boots. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is left to chance. Burn it! Burn it! So before the iconic red tunics are put on, it's once round the parade square to make sure everyone knows their job. Yeah. So we refer to that parade as the uh, check parade, so it's our sort of final rehearsal. Uh, we like to think that the blokes know what they're doing by the time we get here, but it's just tidying up a few of the sort of, you know, funnies that might 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 go wrong on the day. So uh, we go through the full mount, uh, at, at sort of periods of the dismount, and then that's us complete, ready to step off in, in tunic and bearskin. Then that's important, time. don't you think, for people to see um, the, these brave men not just in the red tunics. Right. You see that they are soldiers. And I think yes. that's lost on a lot of Americans, guys. Right. And I'm talking to the American audience right now. They're not just standing there. You know, these guys are trained. They're hardcore. Yes. So they deserve and demand respect. And they should be given that. Absolutely. That's right. So if you're in their way, get out. Yeah. Touches. And most people, when you think London, you think of guys with big black hats and red tunics outside of Buckingham Palace. Beautiful. Obviously being a part of that's been, you know, Big privilege and get to sort of go places where most sort of civilians don't know they had knives. Bayonet. I've been in two and a half years now, and still, you know, the, the pride of marching across there and having everyone watch you, it still it doesn't change. It's the same the first time I've done it to even now. It's a very proud feeling. Uh, you don't experience it really anywhere else. When you stand there looking smart, you, you think, oh yeah, the public is seeing me looking smart. So it's a good feeling, really. But this is just one side of the Coldstream Guards. Right. The other looks like this. Mm -hmm. These trainee guardsmen and recent recruits from other regiments are preparing for an ambush at the Catterick Garrison in Yorkshire. Excited to get on with some sectional attacks, do some fun stuff, running about, um, firing the weapon. Some fun uh, stuff. So yeah, look, looking forward to today. The section attacks, fighting, but uh, discharging my weapon, to be honest, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but before you can fire a rifle, it has to be clean. Yep. Trigger, trigger guard, pistol grip, magazine housing, magazine release catch. We're just stripping and assembling weapons after contacted last night and this morning, so they're pretty dirty, so you want to clean them just so. You know, mm -hmm. So if anything does happen again, you're not less likely to get stoppages. It makes it less hassle for you. Yeah. Time then to dig in and wait to attack. This is as close as we're going to get to the real thing at the moment.
Oh, here we go. Elsewhere in Yorkshire, the bomb squad is training to defuse improvised explosive devices, or IEDs. Teams from the Army, RAF, and Royal Navy are all being tested. Oh, really? Now that surprises me. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and there's a lot going on in Yorkshire, too. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's cool. That, but not getting to fire your rifle, though, your gun. It's like a musician that gets a brand new guitar or piano, and it's like, you can't play that yet. Yeah. <laughs> so based upon devices that we've either seen uh, in the past uh, or currently, uh, or potentially ones that we think could come in the future. So we try to test them in line with the threat in the UK uh, and also the potential threat from maybe terrorist attacks. Yeah. Where possible, they use the robot. Called a cutlass, it can do it all. Yep. You can open boots, open doors, um, it's got weapons on it, so you've got certain presets that allow it to climb upstairs. But wow. sometimes, even the seemingly easy tasks prove tricky. It happens. The course is run by the Army's Explosive Ordnance Disposal Regiment, or EOD. It's to test the ability to make sure that they seem to be working on the UK mainland streets. One of the toughest tests for an EOD team is when someone's life is in danger. There's a device under this car. The driver is still inside. No time for the robot or the protective bomb suit. Saving life is our priority at all costs. So my aim was to get down the road as quickly as possible, but safely to assess the situation and try and remove him from the danger, not the danger from him. Once clear, the cutlass is deployed. Nice. But the job isn't finished, and that means wearing the suit. With all our remote means, everything we do remotely, we have to confirm manually. So whatever the robot does, I didn't have to go and trace, because um, sometimes things do get missed on the cameras, or we might not see the full device not, might not be separated properly. So then I have to go and confirm all that before I can allow anybody else to come down. As you can see, manual dexterity can be quite tricky, especially in these sort of conditions. Uh, obviously, yeah, it looks like the weather could definitely be an issue and a, um, a challenge, an extra challenge on top of the dangerous job you're already doing. Absolutely. Rain doesn't help. It's quite heavy itself, uh, especially wearing the Nomex as well. It's very restrictive uh, for breathing. Obviously, it's for my safety. How can he see what he's doing? <laughs> I was just wondering that myself. I can't see his eyes, so I'm sure I'm wondering how he can see what he's doing. That's impressive. This is a very important video, um, you know, to give credit to these um, these brave men and women mm -hmm. that are doing stuff like this every single day. Yes. You know, we've looked at so many of the different different traditional um, things within the the military with the UK but never looking at the day-to-day -day stuff. So I'm very thankful for this video yes. already. I hope you guys are too. Master Mentally specs. it's very fatiguing. Uh, yeah, you're constantly thinking, what am I doing now? But you enjoy it? Yeah, very much so. As you can see, very happy. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's, uh, awesome. it's quite rewarding. Um, you know, it's, it's a very important job mm -hmm. and hopefully we're not needed, but it's, uh, we train very hard in case we are needed. You're thankful for that. Yes. Before a bomb can be defused, it has to be discovered. That's often done thanks to the noses of the military working dogs. They come in all shapes and sizes. This is my arms and explosive search dog, Geo. He's a three-year-old golden retriever. Um, he's, an, he's the only golden retriever in, in service in the uh, RAF and the um, British nice. Army. Okay, I'm not trying to be pause happy here, but I just something I have to compare that to. So in America, um, a golden retriever and a collie, border collie, you know, we have Belgian Malinois and um, German, German shepherds, shepherds, and that's pretty much it. More standard. So it, to see these, and you know, Debbie and I are dog um, psychologists. We have our own nonprofit. We do um, dog rescue mm -hmm. work. So that's just interesting to see that. Didn't know um, that... They would be different. Yeah. Just surprised by that. Huh. But we love doggies, so now really we pay attention to this part. <laughs> I trust him with my life to, to do the job that I do. God bless him. Massively friends, massively friends. He, he loves me, I love him, and uh, we frustrate each other when we're working. <laughs> <laughs> Geo's sense of smell has the power to save lives. Yes. He and Rob train hard to make sure that nose 
is at its best. Oh. So this is a um, scent carousel. Um, what oh, I'm doing with cool. Gio is I've put a um, sample that he's trained to find into one of the pots and he, his job is to go around and um, search in each individual pot in a systematic way um, yeah. and then indicate and tell me where, which pot it's on. Gio dogs. leaves Rob in no doubt where the explosives are. Yeah, sure. See you And that means it's playtime. And this fills yeah. up the bond between the dog and the handler. Um, so I can have, as you've seen there, I can have a good good play with him, chuck him around a bit, and um, it's it's the interaction between us as well. So he wants to he wants to keep playing with me. He wants to find it find the explosives as as quick and as as easily as he can, so he can get his ball and have a play with dad. And that's that's what really drives ah, <laughs> really drives him to uh, to go and go and find that Kong and keeps him going, going, going for so long. Love it. RAF Bryce really? Norton has round nice. 40 dogs trained for a variety of roles. RAF Bryce Norton has round 40 dogs wow. trained for a variety of roles. Very cool. So this is Chum, he's Chum. a three-year-old uh, collie, and he's trained as a drug detection dog working at, uh, mainly out at the terminal here. So as the, as the bags come through, I'll send Chum onto him and he'll methodically search each, each individual bag. This is all a big game to him, so we associate the scent that he's finding, so the drugs, with the ball, and he wants to work for his ball so he can have that play stage. So he's gone back to that bag now, and this is where my interest will help Chum out and we'll work as a team to find anything. And that's Chum's indication there. He's showing me that there's something in that bag. Mm -hmm. so, nice. 100% that he's not wrong. <laughs> it's a massive game for him. Massive game. It's the same as all. We're, we're even, even the explosives dogs, they don't realise how much danger they could potentially be and how yeah. close they are to, the, to these... Um, to the, you can see he's mad for it. <laughs> no, we'll go around in a minute, mate. So, yeah, it, it, just, it just replicates into a game and they, they want to chase that ball for as long as they can. Each dog has a different personality, but not always a name to match. We've got an Alan at the moment, we've got an Ethel, uh, Ethel. we've had Bubbles, <laughs> we had one come in called Killer. Gives you a smile on your face every time you say Alan. This is Alan. <laughs> Sit. That's what we recognise over here the most. Get Don't stand still! Ethel's hot, oh, it's my dog! Jace! Hey, come on! Ah! Love it. The criminal draw weapon, stand still. Alan, leave clean. Alan is a fierce patrol dog. Yeah, he is. But he's mm -hmm. not allowed to bite everyone. When releasing a dog, same with a weapon, when it's endangering life, really is the main thing, um, or key assets, is what we provide. So if somebody has intentions of harming um, persons or equipment, that's when we really can release a dog, yeah. Mm -hmm. There is plenty to protect at RAF Bryce Norton. It's Britain's busiest military airbase. Supplies are flown from here. Okay, so when he was just checking, they weren't just checking luggage. That wasn't just like a railer airport then. No, that was a, still a drill, I think. I didn't Well, I, I know they're all drills, but I thought they were at a railer airport and that would be something they would do. I guess I got that wrong. Let me know in the comments if I got that wrong. I but did, didn't I? I think they were just practicing for when they do it for real. But would they do it for real in a normal airport? Yes. A regular airport? Yes. Okay. That's what I got from it. I'm just, again, the only thing that's weird to me about that, not weird, different, is that we would have the police do that. Right. Not the military. That's all. But that's interesting. Here to support operations around the world. The most active of those Whoa. is Op Shader, the fight against the so-called Islamic State. British jets have been flying sorties since September 2014. They've conducted nearly 1,400 airstrikes across Iraq and Syria. That's second only to the United States. The British effort is based at RAF Akrotiri in Cyprus. From there, eight Tornado GR4s and six Typhoons fly their missions. There is also a fleet of Reaper drones based in the Gulf. It's not just about dropping bombs. Crews are also tasked with gathering intelligence, the team on the ground scouring everything that comes in. Every time the jets go up, they are joined by Voyager, 
The military version of the Airbus A330, this refueler makes the fight against IS possible. Pilots can come for a refill up to three times on a sortie, okay. keeping them in the air for seven hours. Wow. Other nations' jets also get fuel from Voyager, which allows the combined coalition force to fly missions around the clock. Okay, that's cool. That's super cool. But this isn't the only operation on Cyprus. For decades, British soldiers have been helping to keep the peace on the island. They patrol the buffer zone between the Turkish and Greek sides as part of the United Nations operation. The 180-kilometer belt of land was finally fenced off in 1974 following a ceasefire. It marks the front lines of the Turkish and Greek armies. Troops from 7 Regiment Royal Logistic Corps are currently deployed. They patrol unarmed, checking no one is breaching the terms of the ceasefire. I guess you kind of have to for that reason. In some places, the buffer zone is a few kilometers wide, others just a few meters. Okay, thanks. Many of the buildings show signs of the fighting. Mm. Nothing has really changed here since it stopped. The only new additions emblems of the different regiments who've patrolled these streets. The UN says there are around a thousand incidents a year in the buffer zone, from guns being fired to name calling. The fighting ended 40 years ago, and as yet, no official peace deal has been signed, but talks continue. <laughs> there is a role the British military has been doing for even longer. What's that? It happens here, way out on the Yorkshire Moors. This is RAF Filingdale's radar station, where every minute of every day, there is a team looking up on our behalf in case there's a nuclear attack. Okay. Wow. This is the space operations room. This is where we carry out both our primary and secondary mission. Primary being ballistic missile early warning. So essentially, when missiles are launched, we will track them. Uh, the second mission of space surveillance, making sure we uh -huh. have satellites are where they're supposed to be and they're okay. not doing anything they're not supposed to. Throughout the day, we get um, this, uh, what we call a RAF job, which is basically uh, a combust timetable for satellites. Um, so these are the objects that we're interested in. What I've put up here is a, uh, the orbit for the International Space Station. Uh, it comes up as object 25544. The ISS is obviously a, a huge object, so, so if, if we miss that object, uh, we've done something very wrong. <laughs> but yeah, um, the, the smaller objects are the ones that we're, we have a bit more interest in. They're tracking around 40,000 objects in space. Only about 2,000 are working satellites. Wow. So they are looking out for potential collisions, but also where new satellites could go. The ballistic missile threat kind of captures the public imagination because most people live through it for the Cold War and you understand what it means. I think trying to explain to people that denial of space would take away some of their basic things they've come used to these days, no Facebook, no social media. Right. Probably has a bigger impact, but they probably just don't really connect it with what's happening in this space. Mm -hmm. But the primary mission remains... I, I go back to, again, this is why like this video is important, because you don't understand what the militaries do yeah. every day to secure things, even as simple as the internet, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's impressive. Yeah. And I just did not realize how much um, was going on in the orchestra with the military. Mm -hmm. This is really... Um, I didn't know. I had no idea. I didn't either. Well, they probably just don't really connect it with what's happening in the space. But the primary mission remains providing early warning of a nuclear strike. Absolutely. They train hard and often, so they're ready. My certification received. Oh, no. Okay, precautionary one dash one. Copy. Eyes on for build up. Space don't tell us what's happening here. At the moment, the uh, satellites picked up a large heat source from a, a missile launch or a space launch. They're preparing now just in case it generates a, a site report, which is a, a launch a predicted impact for a missile. Mm. And the guys at the front, they're talking to UK and, and uh, American higher authority okay. to make sure they're receiving Filingdale's data. Filingdale's site report result, a valid for two missiles, acknowledge CTF-345, acknowledge UK Spock. So that would be the, uh, the launch point and the predicted impact point and the times the missile is expected to impact on the ground. East, 122.02, earliest time 09.3651. Historically, the threat came from Soviet Russia, and elsewhere, once again, it is the Russians keeping our armed forces busy.
Russian planes repeatedly buzz NATO airspace, mm -hmm. a modern threat the RAF is ready for. There have been jets on standby in the UK every single minute since the Battle of Britain in 1940. Wow. This training exercise shows how quickly they react. Awesome. Ooh, I got chills. I know. They are ready to go. In minutes, they are alongside a private jet, which is off its flight plan. If this were real and the jet refused to divert, the Typhoon pilot could be ordered to shoot it down. Rightfully so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they ain't gonna play around if that's real. They ain't, they ain't gonna mess around. That's Ew. a snoop, noop, noop. Back in the English Channel, it is the Russians once again demanding attention. HMS-7 drops its role as fishery protection. Okay. We were tasked by uh, the Navy to intercept a Russian landing craft or a landing ship uh, that was uh, returning uh, from the Mediterranean and heading back, uh, we believe, uh, towards its home port in Russia. We sighted it about 12 miles and we closed in and uh, put the ship uh, just astern, so behind the Russian ship, had about a mile uh, to follow her up the English Channel. The Royal Navy regularly conducts escort duties as part of our responsibility to protect UK waters. Yeah. At the end uh, of, the, uh, of the encounter with her, uh, we have a tradition that uh, warships salute each other. And so when we departed the escort, uh, we conducted a sail pass of the, of the Russian ship. And we also hoisted an international signal code, uh, code Uniform Whiskey, which, which wishes them a safe onward voyage. Very cool. I like that. But the Russians sailed on without responding. Oh. Oh, we've come, wow, that was an abrupt ending. That was, that was. Wow. So informative. Like I had no idea everything that they were protecting. Yeah, I think that's that's the co the common person. I'm just called the common folk. I'm common people. <laughs> I didn't mean that. the average individual doesn't think about that. And we're not military. No. Um, but you know, um, but we know at the same time, or at least, you know, most people, a lot of people know that, um, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's stuff every single day, you know, I think yep. for us in America specifically since, you know, 9-11, um, mm -hmm. we might be a little bit more aware of, you know, things that have to be done and set in place to keep us safe. Um, some things that always think, work. I think too, the, the world after, is more aware after that. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And, it, and like they showed in this video, it's not just, you know, like planes in your airspace. It's also it's everything. taking out outer space for nuclear weapons being launched, um, yeah. protecting your satellites for communication. Yeah. I mean, if that, if that was taken out. Oh, so much. What would we do? We'd be crippled, you know, but. Um, I don't know how many of us remember Morse code. <laughs> Do any of us remember Morse code? <laughs> How old do you think we are, Debbie? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but no, if you guys like this video, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to this channel. Again, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody that does these jobs every day to keep yes. um, not just the people of the United Kingdom safe, but us. Because, the world. you know, like they were making calls and checking in with America, stuff like that. We were yep. checking in with you. Again, brothers and sisters. Cousins, grandparents, well, how yep. you guys want to look at it, but you know, we're one and the same. And that's what makes me proud. That makes me proud. It I does. feel the same pride when I see your military as I do my own. Mm -hmm. And um, I see them as one. And the Allied forces, um, man, I'm telling you, no one can mess with us. Yeah, it's, no one can mess right. with us. Together, we are going to make sure that that good comes out of everything. Mm -hmm. um, but it is important to take time and look and see what these units that don't yes. get the recognition. I think a lot of people think soldiers, military, okay, war, just war. Right. No. Right. Every single day-to-day -day stuff yep. that we take for granted, and we need to thank those folks um, more often. We do. So thank you thank again. You. Yes. Thank you so much. Drop us a comment. If you learned something, let us know what you learned. As you heard at the beginning of the video, um, Debbie uh, announced that uh, up until just the end of the year, um, not only yep. are we doing bonus Fridays, that's right. but well, I guess we'll call them extra Mondays. So you're also going to get us on Monday. So again, make sure you have that notification bell yeah. on. That way you don't miss when we upload. Yeah, because you're going to miss out. 
And this is only until the end of this month. Starting in January, I think we're going back to just the Sunday, Wednesday uploads, just two a week. That's right. Um, so that's the plan as of now. But don't get tired of us. Let's hope we don't burn you out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Again, thank you to the military, American, um, British, all the Commonwealth, all our allies. We love you guys. We really do. That we do. So until um, until Monday. That's going to be weird. Tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Oh, that's right. We'll see you tomorrow. Until um, next time. <laughs> guys, love like Jess. Be as strong as Tyson. See you tomorrow. Bye.